Good morning. If we think about the story of Stephen, we think about yesterday and today. So um, if you hadn't read um, yesterday's readings, I just invite you to do that just so you get the whole story again. Not that you don't know it, but it's good to read it all together. So if you read yesterday and today's uh, first readings together, uh, give you the, the whole story of this incident with Stephen being stoned. You know, different saints throughout the history of the church have sought identification with Jesus. So, for instance, Francis wanted to imitate our Lord in his poverty, for instance. Um, some of the saints have um, been um, identified with the Lord against their will by being martyred, you know, and particularly even like St. Andrew on the cross, you know. What's interesting, St. Andrew, or St. Peter, uh, I'm sorry, and St. Andrew too, but St. Peter, didn't want, didn't feel worthy to be identified with Jesus. Didn't want anyone to say that, oh, Peter and Jesus are the same. They were both, you know, so he asked to be crucified upside down. Some have wanted to imitate Jesus in his virginity, in his total dedication to the Father, you know. Here we see St. Stephen, um, whether he's conscious of it or not, or, or whether it's just um, so a part of him that he does it naturally, we don't know. But who can miss the identification with Jesus in the way he dies? And so, first of all, he... Uh, Lord, receive my spirit. You know, one of the words, we talk about the seven last words of Jesus, you know. But one of these is, Lord, receive my spirit. You know? And so Stephen, he's not just dying. And he's, you know, he's offering himself. Lord, receive me, you know. And so he gives a little different picture of his dying. He's not just being stoned. He's not just being a martyr, you know, but Jesus lived and died for his father in the way that he understood his father's will to be. And so you, you see that same thing in Stephen, that his death is not just a death, it's an offering to the father, receive my spirit. And then, of course, his last word Lord, do not hold this sin against them. You know, again, uh, identifying with the word of Jesus. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. You know, <clears throat> and so um, it, it's something for us to think about sometimes. You know, how can I identify with Jesus? We might do it by offering up our suffering, whatever it is, with Jesus' suffering. You know, we not just offer it up, but offer it in tandem with Jesus. Offer it our suffering with Jesus' sufferings. You know? um, priests have a certain way of identifying with Jesus. You know, and I won't go into all that with you, um, but. Um, um, so, but there are ways that we can identify with Jesus and the closer we can, um, the more real that relationship becomes. You know. We might identify with Jesus in praying the stations of the cross, you know, as we walk the stations, especially if you walk them in prayer, um, like, like some of the prayer, like St. Ignatius uh, suggested, putting yourself in the story, you know, so that you're standing in front of the crucifix, or maybe you're Simon being made to help Jesus carry the cross, or you're one of the women of Jerusalem or Veronica, you know, or something. 
It's another way of identifying with Jesus, being make, getting closer to Jesus, you know. The truth is, the biggest identification we have with Jesus is through our baptism. The church says that baptism does three things, you know. It washes away all sin. We and uh, enters us into the church, you know. But the second thing um, the church says about baptism is that it configures us to Christ by an indelible character. And so, as Paul says, do you not know you who are baptized were baptized into his death? You know, and so by baptism, we are baptized into Christ's death and raised again in his resurrection. By an indelible character that can never be taken away. Right? We can never be unbaptized. From the moment we're baptized, we're called Christian. And that's our that's why this day of baptism is so important for us. One of the, one of the things I encourage you to do is find out when your baptismal day was, if you don't know, and celebrate it. We, um, there are a number of parishioners uh, in our parish who celebrate um, the day of their baptism in their families. You know. In some ways, you could argue, and some do argue this. I, I don't know how I feel about it, so I'm not going to give you an opinion. But there are theologians that argue that the day of your baptism is a more important day than the day of your birthday. We tend to celebrate, excuse me, we tend to celebrate birthdays, you know. Not our baptismal day. But that is certainly our first, if, if not our foremost, but it's at least certainly the first way and first time we're ever identified with Christ. So I might suggest to you today and, and uh, offer you to um, ponder that. How am I identified with Christ? Or am I? Do I identify myself with Christ? In what ways? Can I identify myself even more with Jesus? Good. God bless you.